We have worked on orientation dependency of uh, acceleration sensitivity for silicon-based MEMS resonators. Uh, at first, I give a brief uh, introduction on acceleration sensitivity, and then I indicate the theory of acceleration sensitivity for silicon-based resonate, MEMS resonators. Then, um, the nonlinear measurements that we have done, and then acceleration sensitivity measurement, and finally the experimental results, results and uh, at the end, uh, conclusion to sum up the whole study. Uh, the objective of this work is to investigate the effect of silicon crystalline orientation on acceleration sensitivity of silicon-based MEMS resonators. And consequently, we want to find an optimized orientation which has the minimum acceleration sensitivity. We hypothesize that nonlinearity is the main reason behind acceleration sensitivity of these kind of resonators, exactly like quartz resonators. And since silicon nonlinearity depends on crystalline orientation and also doping type and concentration, so we expect that acceleration sensitivity is dependent on these two factors. Okay. To, uh, to verify this hypothesis, we have chosen the thin film piezoelectric on substrate or T-pass resonators as a platform because of their high quality factor and also their low insertion loss. In this, in this picture, you can see a three-dimensional view of a TPAS resonator with different layers. We have an SOI, a substrate, uh, and also two top and bottom electrodes and a layer of aluminum nitride as a piezoelectric. And then uh, in this picture, you can see the lateral extensional mode shape of our resonators. The substrate uh, in our devices is a phosphorus doped uh, silicon with doping concentration of 10 to the 19, which is relatively high. Okay, now we want to know how the external acceleration can affect the resonance frequency of a resonator. The external acceleration uh, generates an extra strain for the resonator, and then if the material of the resonator is nonlinear, which means uh, the stiffness is a strain dependent, so the resonance frequency will shift. And the, this resonance frequency shift can be described by this equation. You can see that it depends on the uh, amount of acceleration that we apply and also acceleration sensitivity of the resonator. In theory, we can use the shift of resonance frequency to uh, determine a matrix to um, evaluate the acceleration sensitivity of the resonator. However, in practice, since this delta F is very small value, we cannot measure it. So we have to employ the resonator in an oscillator circuit and then use the other equation to, uh, the, to uh, find the value of the acceleration sensitivity. In this, in this schematic, you can see when we employ the resonator in an oscillator loop, two side bands will generate at the offset frequency equal to FV, which is vibration frequency from the resonance frequency. And then in this equation, LV is the difference between side bands and the carrier. Okay, as I said, we believe that we hypothesize that nonlinearity is the main reason behind acceleration sensitivity of silicon-based resonators. So now we want to make a correlation between nonlinearity and acceleration sensitivity of resonators in different crystalline orientations. For this, for this purpose, we fabricated three similar resonators in three different crystalline orientations, 100, 5 degree of 110, and 110. You can see the SEM picture of these resonators in these pictures. And here we have a schematic that shows relative position of 100 and 110 resonators in an SOI wafer, in an uh, 100 SOI wafer. Okay, uh, as a measure of nonlinearity, we used uh, amplitude frequency coefficient. Uh, for this purpose, we uh, increase the input power of each resonator to have the same normalized frequency shift for all of those three resonators. As you can see in this picture, the normalized frequency shift here for all of those three resonators are the same. Then uh, we measured the S parameters of each resonator and imported it to the ADS software and used it as a resonator model. And then we calculate the energy and density stored each, in each resonator. This table shows the different parameters, such as input power, out, input current, output current, 
uh, power dissipated in the resonator and then finally the energy density storage is in, in each resonator that we simulated by the ADS software. Our calculations shows that energy density store, energy stored in uh, 110 resonator is 1.72 times larger than the energy density stored in 100 resonator. Then we uh, calculate the uh, resonator maximum strain through this equation. And finally, we calculate the amplitude frequency coefficient and use it as a measure of nonlinearity. So our results show that the amplitude frequency coefficient for 100 resonator is larger than the one for five degree of 110 and larger than the one for 110 resonator, which means nonlinearity is reducing by rotating re the resonator from 100 toward 110 orientation. Okay, next step is to measure the acceleration sensitivity of these resonators. For this purpose, we employ the resonator in an oscillator loop. You can see the PCB of the oscillator circuit in this picture. So now we have three similar boards, three similar oscillator boards uh, using those three resonators. For, the, uh, for uh, making the oscillator board, we use a CF5027 oscillator IC, which is designed for uh, quartz for commercial applications. Then to have the same phase shift as quartz, we have to use our resonators as a one for configuration. And uh, also to minimize the parasitic effects on resonator acceleration sensitivity, we should decrease the number of components and also the size of the board and also the length of the wire bonds. So now we have three different, uh, three similar oscillator boards with those three resonators. This, this figure shows the phase noise performance for uh, oscillators with 110 and 100 resonator. You can see both of them have excellent phase noise performance, which enhance the accuracy of our measurements. Uh, in addition, you can see 110 resonator uh, is a little bit better, uh, has a little bit better uh, phase noise performance in uh, close to carrier uh, offset frequencies, and that's because of the higher quality factor of this resonator. To measure the acceleration sensitivity, uh, we mount the board, the oscillator board, on a shaker or a magnetic motor, and this magnetic motor is itself in a co closed loop controlling system that enable us to have the stable uh, vibration frequency and magnitude. This system includes uh, an accelerometer and a controller, an amplifier, and this shaker. Then we apply a 6G 1.5 kilohertz sine wave vibration in Z direction, which is normal to the plane of our resonators. And then you can see by applying this vibration, two side bands are generated in the offset frequency equal to vibration frequency from resonance frequency of our resonators. For 100 resonator, you can see that the, this one is for 100 resonator. So we can see that uh, the side, uh, excuse me, this one is for 100 resonator. You can see that the side bands are much, uh, much larger than the one for 110 resonator, which means that this resonator, 110 resonator, is significantly less uh, sensitive to external acceleration. If we calculate the uh, acceleration sensitivity for these two resonators, uh, the one for 100 is 10 to the minus eight, while the one for 110 is 10 to the minus 10. So we can enhance the acceleration sensitivity of resonator by uh, two order of magnitude by rotating the resonator from 100 toward 110 orientation. Then uh, to find the acceleration dependency, the acceleration sensitivity dependency to vibration frequency and vibration magnitude, we change the vibration frequency and also we change the vibration magnitude and uh, measure the acceleration sensitivity. You can see that we still have two order of magnitude difference between acceleration sensitivity for 100 and 110 resonator. In addition, by rotating the resonator's uh, orientation from 100 toward 110, acceleration sensitivity is decreasing. And this is the same trend that we obtained for the nonlinearity of these resonators, which means that there is a correlation between nonlinearity of um, silicon basement resonators and their acceleration sensitivity 
in different peer learning orientations. Uh, to sum up the study, for the first time, we investigate the effect of silicon crystalline orientation on acceleration sensitivity of silicon-based MEMS resonators, and then we uh, find a correlation between nonlinearity and acceleration sensitivity for these resonators. And we figured out that by rotating the resonator from 100 towards 110, we can obtain both uh, better nonlinearity performance and better acceleration sensitivity performance. And one point here that should be considered is that the results of this work are only verifiable for highly N-type do doped lateral extensional mode shape uh, resonators, silicon-based resonators, because we know that silicon nonlinearity is dependent on uh, doping type and concentration and also the mode shape. So for other concentrations and mode shapes, similar studies should be done. And I want to uh, thank Jonathan Gonzalez for his contribution in the fabrication of these resonators. Thank you all.